Uh, uh, I don't want it to, to lose it here. I don't know how well hooked it is. Hi, I'm Zachary Fowler and you're watching 87 Days, the complete reenactment of all I did out on History Channel's The Lone Show in Patagonia to survive. But as if I did it here in Maine, with the resources we find here, how I'll do it differently here, and how i do it differently if I go out on Lone All Stars someday. And this is episode 21, and we're gonna do some ice fishing, catch a trout, and we're gonna do it in a unique way with the military speed hook. I may have been the a heavier man still standing before you if I had had these out there on a loan instead of just plain hooks. This thing is so unique. I purchased and uh, supplied my website with them. The whole thing comes as a complete survival setup. It's got line. It even has a packet of, as you can see right here, look at this, stink bait, ready to go. So if you find yourself in the winter and there's nothing there, this is all you need to fish. It's basic, very simple. It's spring loads, closed like this, and the hook hangs down. It's all hooked and put away right now. But the hook comes down, I'll show you on the ice. And it closes up like this, and the hook hangs down below here with bait. And when it gets set off, it springs open, setting the hook in the fish's mouth. Or, in a survival situation only, mind you, you could use this to catch birds, uh, or even small games, or use it as a uh, trigger system to increase the effectiveness of a snare trap, or who knows. The sky's the limit. This thing is awesome. Let's go play with it. Here we are, down on Seven Tree Pond. We're gonna do some ice fishing. Unbelievable. What a... Un unreal how warm it is as soon as that wind stopped. All right, so we're gonna play around with something new today. Not something I was allowed to have brought on alone because we were allowed 25 hooks, not anything, no, no mechanical assistance. But these are mechanical assistants and uh, a kind of a survival thing that I sell on my website. They're called speed hooks. I'll show you a close up. And uh, they, they spring, they're spring loaded and they set the hook in the fish's mouth. Now we're allowed to bring 25 of these instead of just, just 25 hooks. I think almost every single time a fish bites you're gonna end up with a fish on one of these. I mean these, these are clever. So we're gonna try these out today. They each come with a little bait packet and uh, the bait packet, we've already put some water in there. It swells up these little bait pills. They're little stink baits. And we're gonna try some with that. We're gonna try some with some worms. And we're also gonna make a, uh, our tra some traps out of some garbage. To rig these and put these in the water, we just make some tea sticks, lash them together. And these make a uh, primitive like ice fishing flagging system. If you tie a line to this, it goes down in the water. Boom, it pops, it pops up when the fish pulls it in. Keeps it from going through your ice hole. And uh, you're good to go. There's already a bunch of holes dug here, but I want to try out my new ice cutter, the cold steel ice hole chopper. I did one with the shovel before, but uh, this time I took the shovel handle off, and as you can see, I put my shovel onto a longer handle for chopping holes and ice fishing. So I'm going to pick a spot here and see how quick I can't make myself a hole. It's about six inches of ice. Competition. See who's the faster at Chris's ice chisel or the cold steel shovel. Ready, set, set go. go.
we have a time reference here for how much longer it takes. And through and and my hole is clean. <laughs> clean and ready to fish. How are you doing? Can ah, I have a cold steel <laughs> shovel? Wow. That's a crazy cold steel shovel for the win. That is awesome. Talk about oh, whoop. A little wet out here on the ice today. Rained and then froze again. Weird winters, weird winters. Let's get a speed hook in the hole. Cold steel shovel for the win once again. All right, so we've got the little speed hook. And it comes with just a small, small hook. Because these are military survival things. They want you to catch a, a bunch of minnows versus uh, something bigger. Whoops. And uh, so I'm gonna try some out like this and then change some of the hooks out on another couple of them and uh, see if I can't catch something bigger. Or maybe I'll catch a uh, something small on this, catch a minnow, and then upgrade that minnow to a bigger hook, catch something bigger. All right. So uh, to bait this, I got the little hook that I came with with a little stink bait thing placed on there. And the spring-loaded setup is to bring it closed and you put the uh, this little hooky do through the eye. So when the fish bites on your line here, this goes boing, springs open, sets the hook. There we go. I'm just gonna drop her down in the hole. And I think I think it's about 10 feet deep here, so I'm gonna go fairly low to the bottom with this set. And I take my T-stick, and I just put a half hitch around the end a couple times to lock it in place. There we go. My extra line's just kicking it over here, and my T-stick keeps it from going yanked down in there, so when I get a bite, and the fish takes it, speed hook goes off, it's set in his mouth, he yanks it in, this should flip up like so, and it's kind of like a, uh, a flag telling me there's something on the line. I'm gonna set a couple more, Let's see if we can't catch a fish. All right, well, I was waiting for a speed hook to do something. I went and collected some garbage from along the shore here, people have been leaving around. Somebody's a big fan of pulling springs, so I'm gonna uh, turn these into fish traps. I collected some rocks and see if we can increase our chances. I think I'm gonna use some of those little baits, the stink baits from the um, from the speed hook set. See if they can't uh, catch something. And these are the easiest kind of traps in the world to make. Right here, just simply cut off the front of the bottle and stick it back in there the other way around just like so cut it off stuff it back in there fish goes in goes in and then doesn't want to come back out the smaller hole they might come and go some but for the most part you got them Winter time's a hard time to start out with without any bait. If you got nothing and you're trying to improvise everything off the fly, off the cuff, you haven't come prepared, you know, I think uh, your best bet would probably break off some barks from some logs and look for some some grubs that bore along just underneath the bark. Um, and then you could throw, smash a couple of them up and toss them in here. But we're gonna use some of these scented baits to see if we can increase the the amount of fish we can get in there and the amount of time I have it in the water, there's two of them. And a uh, little rock to help sink to the bottom. Kind of a big rock. We'll go over and poke another hole and throw her in the shallows by the weeds.
about six feet deep. There we go. Clove hitch onto this. There. Let's see if we can get some minnows. All right, so we got the torque, cold weather bands like I sell on my website, and one of my favorite warrior pouches. And we got a coffee cup stuck on a stick here on the ice. We're gonna head back about uh, 75 feet and see if we can't take her out. See who gets it first. Me or you, Chris, come on, let's do it. Let's get it. The bands are outperforming my fingers, huh? That's it, I'm done. All right. Uh, it's time to pull them. No luck so far. Maybe tomorrow. Boing. Although we haven't had any luck at this spot with anything, much less these bait things, so I don't know. Might be moving to another spot next time. I'm gonna leave my uh, bait trap out in the other hole over there and uh, see what we get from that. See our improvised bait trap worked. I'm gonna chisel, chisel it out of here without cutting the line. <laughs> Throws up good overnight. There we go. If we caught any bait. Yeah, a whole lot of nothing. Well, maybe it wasn't the best spot. I'll try somewhere else. All right, and down here on the pond that I jumped in earlier this year to test out. Go prepared survival and drop forge put together a survival kit. So we're gonna test it out bear grill style. Wow, that's cold. There it is. I'm gonna throw some of these in there again. Increase my fresh scent in the, the little fish trap here. A rock for a sinker. Say goodbye to it and see if we catch some, uh, there it goes, shiners or something to take ice fishing. All right, let's see how we did. I didn't come back and check on this last night. I left it overnight. Oh yeah. We got something. Let's see. Hard to see them in the bottle. Let's see. One, two. I'll put them in the bucket and then we can probably see them. I don't want to drop them in there with the rock. One. Look at those. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Nice. Oop, the bait pellets are still there. I want to put those back in there and put it back in the water. Uh, whoop, five of them. Is that five? Oh well, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Speed hook bait pellets work pretty good. Let me get some more water for you guys. Oops. Been so cold, oh, so, been so warm, it didn't even freeze back up. What a weird winter. All right, well, let's go ice fishing.
All right, a little shiner here on the uh, speed hook setup. Going at it once again. Let's see if I can't catch something today. Pick some new spots today. Use some of the uh, holes that the guys had the other day. They were over here. Uh, we sat further out the other day. And didn't get anything, and they caught uh, one or two fish. So we're setting on their spots now since they're not here. All right, she's set. Hopefully catch something. Beautiful day. Freezing cold, man. Get your, just enough, the tie one on, drop it down in, your hands get cold. And uh, burritos. Let's see if we see anything here. Line looks straight down. You gotta keep moving to stay warm on a day like today. Do some push up. Some ice push up. Fancy ice push up. Some ice break dancing. Help me, I'm falling and I can't get up. We need a fishing calus We need a roller. Then go left. I think I might have something. My, or my minnow's got a good swim on him. What we got here? Oh, I got something. Oh, dude! Holy cow! Oh, man! Oh, man! Oh, 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 I gotta let him run. I got a trout! I got a trout! Oh, yeah! I, oh, she's a beaut! Oh, man! Oh, nope, oh, I'm gonna let it run. Awesome. I do not want to lose this one. This is, um, oh man. Oh, the, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, wow. Here, shine it down in the hole. Grab the camera. Uh, 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 I don't want it to, to lose it here. I don't know how well hooked it is. Can you see it? Yep. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that. There's a keeper. There's a. Oh, look at the size of this guy. Look at the size. Here, look at that. Here. Look at, yeah, hold it where it's good. Look at that beautiful. That is. Oh, mm, I have. I have not seen a trout this beautiful since Patagonia all summer playing around fishing This is this and look caught it on the speed hook speed hook right there Nice this is a this is gonna take this back to the shelter smoke it have myself some trout and fish head soup smoke trout Ah, oh, Yes <laughs> Hard work paid off just got a flag on the speed hook that he's let me try out here. It's not big by any means. He just caught a beautiful trout. Oh, a little yellow perch. But we'll let him go here. Just showing that the speed hook really does work. 
and well. Get down there, bud. Awesome day. Got my trout. I'm gonna go back and uh, cook up my trout. I'm getting a, got a bit of a cold or a flu or something going on for a couple days, so I'm gonna make some pine needle tea, some trout, fish head soup. I'll be mended in no time. Yeehaw. All right, here we go. Processed up a little of the reed tip as a, something quick accelerant to light the birch bark. There we go. I put a little bit more of a hole in the ceiling straight above where the fire is. So hopefully this time it'll be a little a light a lot less smoky. I spent so much time fishing this week to catch that trout. I haven't been able to get up here and and decorate the way I wanted to. I'm gonna spend more time out here, so maybe next week go down to the river and get some stones and build this in nicely and a little maybe a bit of a chimney so that the fire as it heats it goes up and against it and channels it all out. Look at that beauty. Man, what a beautiful fish. What a beautiful trout. I cleaned her out. And uh, what I did out there to clean them is I just gut them and I use all the guts in traps while I was there in Patagonia and uh, when I gut them I also I left the liver in there and snipped out the uh, gallbladder and I leave the heart in there so I still have the heart and the liver to throw in my fish head soup and have a little something to eat there's the heart yeah set that to the side and throw that in the soup pan and then I'll Pop out the liver. I'll throw that in the soup too. Good for you. Eat as much as you can. I think next time I'll probably clean out the guts, you know, if I ever do this again, and even eat those because I ate the fish head, I ate everything in the soup, and I kept using the guts as like as like bait on the traps, but there was nothing out there to eat. There was nothing out there to catch with those that bait. So after I process it down to that level, just keep removing the guts and that, I would always cut off the head and place it on a steak. So I'll do that now, I'll place it on a separate stick, smoke it separately. I smoke that for a couple days before I turn that to fish head soup, but today we're just gonna smoke it along with the fish and then make fish head soup. Try to smoke it for about four hours before I take it and I throw it on some coals and finish the cooking process. And so I just take the stick, you put it right in there, open her up, and stick it right up and into the tail section. I don't know, a couple inches up in there so it can hang like so. And now we just gotta find a spot to place it in here so it's over the smoke, but not in any heat. I'm thinking like down here is where you can't keep your hand for more than 10 seconds, right? So another foot, foot and a half above that, you hang your trout and you let it sit right up there in the smoke. And then I'll do the same with the fish head. Spot to stick it right there. Let them sit up there in the smoke for about four hours. I'm gonna collect some more firewood so I can keep this going. And I wanna, just like I did out there, I try to always collect about uh, two days worth of firewood whenever I go to collect firewood. That way I can be prepared. So if something happened to me, you know, say I've been doing that for 30 days, I've been collecting a day and a half to two days worth of firewood every day. 
and something happens, then I am able to you know twist my ankle. I can I can sit around and let it heal instead of having to do more firewood. That and I gotta collect some water and see if we can't get the uh, we can put that fish head soup on. Oh, that looks like it's smoking away just right. Back with my pot, got filled it up with some water. Grab some pine needles, I have been sick all week. Monday, really bad, and then just, it's been hanging on after the fever went away. So I need some pine needles for an infusion of vitamin C. And the trout's been smoking for about four hours now. Starting to get, uh, still a little soft. Best is if you smoke it for long enough, it gets firm, so it's dried, it's dried out some, you know, it's really smoked well. So the minimum I ever did was always smoking it for at least four hours. Didn't matter how hungry I was, because you just want that infusion of flavor that comes with smoking a trout. Oh, it's amazing. We'll rake out some coals and finish off the cook and uh, get this pot of fish head soup on, trout head soup with pine needles. Yeehaw. This is... The same pot I had out with me on a loan. It's just a Coleman, a very cheap Coleman pot with this. You can see the handle's all wonky and melted from use. It's very cheap, but sturdy. I still use it, still love it. Oh, I almost forgot. Put my liver, oops, I got a little moss on it. It's okay, more seasoning. Just what a growing boy needs right now since I got a cold. I never liked liver. But that was like such a tasty morsel. The fish livers. I don't know. You spend 87 days alone and you only have fish. And then you get the, the fish eggs and the liver being such a small little treat in almost every fish. It was so good. Got a nice little pile of firewood started. So if I was to come out here, or if some hunter or somebody else, not that it's hunting season, comes along and finds themselves in a bad way, I can fire up the fire and, and they have some firewood. This isn't that kind of place where people just stumble along and need a rescue. I mean, there's houses a mile away. Uh, now the outside feels leathery. It's not greasy like a fish anymore or whatever you feel like it is, slippery, slimy. Um, that way, now at this point when it's dry like this, I could throw it in the pan, dry without any oil or something like that, and just burn it, sear it, and it won't stick to the pan. Uh, or, like I have it prepped here, we're gonna throw it right on the coals, and uh, coal sear it, and finish that baking process. Soup is done. Let that cool so I can drink it. All right, once again, let the day get away with me. Winter days are so darn short. You want to smoke it and cook it good. You gotta wait. You gotta be patient. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the taste I remember. Fish head soup. My first week there, I had a little song. I said, fish head soup. Too bad you taste like poop. And I had uh, all these other verses to it. And I was like, fish head soup. I wish you were a pizza. With pepperoni and mushrooms. Shiitake, stir fried, then placed on top in a deep dish pizza. And I kept adding on to it. It got crazier and crazier every time because pizza is my favorite food. Um, 
before going out there and surviving. Ooh, get smoked. Um, but man, at the end I had a different song. I was like, fish head soup. Like, you sustain and keep me alive or something. I don't know. I can't remember it. The only one that ended up on TV is the fish head soup. You, you taste like poop one. <laughs> All right, time for the fish. Time for the actual fish. Look at this guy. Look at that guy. He is looking scrumptious. Scrum diddly umptious. Ah. One thing would be better is if I had brought a stick of butter to dip it in. Beautiful. Oh, just falls apart. Gorgeous. Out there in Patagonia, there was three types of trout I caught: brookies, rainbows, and somebody said was what they called a, a shard. It was a pink trout. And I think that's what they were calling him as a shard. I don't know. I'm horrible with names and stuff. I can't remember it. More than five seconds. I always call things the inappropriate names. And people always get on my case about it. And it's not something I can help. Mmm. Oh, yeah. That's delicious. And those pink ones, though. Those pink ones were like... I was like a duck trap salmon that you can get around here. I've been like... Smoked. And you can buy them like bagels and lox type salmon. Look at those pieces just pull right off. Nice big meaty pieces come right off, leaving the bones behind. And if you've done it just right, you'll manage to pull most of your pieces off the fish and they'll come right out like boom, big old chunk. And you won't have, you know, leave the bones right on the fish. You cook it a little bit too long, and it still tastes great, but it pulls the bones out with the meat. Look at that. Look at that color. Mmm. That that's the best piece. That's what it is. That little piece right by the tail. Oh, man. That is the most delicious piece. Mmm. Oh, I'm so hungry I almost forgot to say grace. Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for giving me this trout. And this chance to just to have fish head soup again. Thank you for sustaining me for that 87 days and, and bringing it home for the wind for my family. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, wow, thanks for watching, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. I, Finish this so late so it's getting dark and I don't give you a better look of what this this looks like. But hopefully there's a lot more trout in the future and uh, or other fish. All in all, it says a win. A speed hook works great. I think it'll be fun to try out some other stuff with it as time goes on here. I'd love to to use it as a uh, as I mentioned that it can be used as a, a primitive trap or um as a survival trap and or uh, I'd love to use it to increase the uh, as the trigger system for a bigger trap possibly a big snare something so that it could be a hair trigger and set off a heavier duty trap I think that would be pretty neat so uh, let's see if we can get into that and we'll do some more ice fishing I want to make one on uh, improvised you know, we managed to catch our our bait and stuff like that. But I'd like to work my way right from the start. Maybe with some garbage. And make some uh make some of our own fishing line out of uh trash. I'll show you how to do that. And I'll catch a fish with it and stuff. Take it right through from from garbage to fish. And a delicious meal like this one. Totally nailed it. Speed hook for the win. Thanks for watching, guys.
I'll see you next time. Fowler out. Fish head soup. <coughs> Fish head soup. I used to think you taste like poop. <laughs>